Good afternoon and welcome to Elida High School, to the field house, the Union Bank Court, where this afternoon WS brings, WOSN brings you a regional final matchup. This is the regional final matchup of a pair of teams from the Northwest Conference as we have Columbus Grove matched up with the Crestview Lady Knights. My name is Mark Sean. My pleasure to be played by play. Alongside your color commentary, Mr. Dave Bow and Dave, these two teams played two months ago. They played back on January 4. On that day, Crestview won 52-39. A lot happens in two months. A lot happens in two months, Mark. It is great to be your wingman today. Regional championship. Little Mecca here at the Elida Fieldhouse. Who's going to punch their ticket to Dayton? And you're right. Two Northwest Conference rivals. Crestview shared the championship with Delphus Jefferson. Columbus Grove right behind with Allen East in the runner-up position. Let's talk about the Crestview Lady Knights. They come in at 25-2 and two on the season. Uh, they were 6-1 in the Northwest Conference. Your, your analysis on Crestview this afternoon. Well, it starts with Callie Gregory, the all-everything senior for Crestview, leading scorer for Crestview, established this year, also the leading scorer of Van Wert County. She averages 21 per game. But you got to look at the supporting cast. Ellie Klein averages 11 points per game. Maya Etzler, 8 points per game. Casey Gregory, 9. When they come together and they are all on the same page, they are so lethal at the offensive end, it puts every defense in stress. They do average 58.2 points per game. They give up 30.4. Let's move over to Columbus Grove and Brian Schrader's team, 21 and five. They were seven and one at PCL, six and two in the Northwest Conference. Your thoughts on those those players? Well, when you look at Columbus Grove, it starts with the junior, Lauren Ochnudy, the counter to Callie Gregory. She averages 21 points per game. First team, Northwest Conference. Grove is in two conferences, the NWC and the PCL. She was the Putnam County League Player of the Year. She is fourth in school history at points right now. And again, you look at Akmudi, you look at Gregory, they may cancel each other out a little bit. So you look at the supporting cast for Grove as well. And you look at Nicole Nesby, the six foot sophomore, she averages 10 points per game. And then a host of others, Ruth Myers, Kendall Paldy, and Abby Stetschulby, they all play extremely hard. And if you give them opportunities to put the ball in the bucket, they'll make you pay. Let's go through the starting laps very quickly. For Crestview, they will go with number three, Casey Gregory, 5'4", freshman. Number four is Ellie Klein. She's a 5'5", five, five junior. Uh, number five is Callie Gregory. She's a 5'10", senior. Number 14 is Maya Etzler, 6'2", senior. And number 21 is Josie Kowicki. She is a 5'5", five, five sophomore. For Columbus Grove, number two, Lauren Ockmoody, 5'7", junior. Number five, Ruth Myers, 5'5", five, five sophomore. Number 21, Kendall Palti, 5'9", sophomore. Number 22, Abby Stecksholdy, 5'6", senior. And number 23, Nicole Nesby, a 6'0", senior. And Dave, very quickly, I see just three total seniors starting this particular basketball game. How about that? Yeah, exactly. So you're going to look at both of these teams saying, hey, we're happy to be here. We want to punch our ticket to Dayton. But we're ready to reload <laughs> come next year. But right now, the focus is the Elida Fieldhouse here. Championship game, regional style. Who's going to punch the ticket? And a chance to play in the state tournament on Thursday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We've given you the starting lineups, a little bit of analysis. We'll have the opening tip off after this. You're watching high school tournament basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Atlanta Fieldhouse in the Bank Court. We're going through the starting lineups as we look at the floor right now. We've not talked yet about our officiating crew. That would be Wayne Allstetter in his 18th year. Brian Edwards in his 25th year, Austin Cape in his 15th, and day before we get this thing started, the Elida Fieldhouse, one of the great Bloody venues in our area, Dave Evans and his staff. This game right here is the 13th of their 14 <laughs> tournament games that they're going to host in this facility, and they do a wonderful job here. They do a wonderful job, and I hope that they plan to have a get-together, a party afterwards <laughs> to celebrate another year of just outstanding execution. The Crestview Knights come in with the wins over North Central. That was 80 to 12. Fayette 82 21. Stryker 72 32. Ayersville 51 23. And then they defeated Tiffin Calvert in the regional semifinals 65 to 41. The Columbus Grove Bulldogs, they defeated Fort Jennings 47 to 18. Kaleida 45 38. Miller City 48 35. And then they won their semifinal game in the regional. 
against Gibsonburg, 53-44. Crestview really, Davis, has soared through the turn, but Groves been tested a little bit more. Somewhat of a concern, perhaps, for Crestview, not facing a, a challenge-type game yet. Yeah, Crestview's on a 12-game winning streak. Grove has won five in a row, but you're right. When you don't have that fourth quarter uh, toughness in a situation where you've got to gut one out and you haven't experienced that for a while, you do. You forget what that's about, and uh, that could definitely present itself today. Look at how these teams have fared in the past. 2023, Columbus Grove was in this exact same position and lost to Toledo Christian 43-21. to What's happened with the Crestview Knights? They've been to state five times. The last time was in 2021, and they were in the regional semifinal last year, lost to the same team, 50-36. And we are ready to play this regional final. And somebody from the Northwest Conference is going to the state tournament. They're going to punch their ticket. I think we're going to see both teams just mano y mano. Maybe a wrinkle here and there from either uh, from both sides. But overall, it's just going to come down to grit, determination, and execution. Esther tips into the backcourt to Ellie Klein. To the wing it goes. Callie Gregory on top to Casey Gregory. Grove in their patented 2-3 zone defense. Ruth Myers just a water bug out there on the right front of that 2-3 zone. Casey Gregory eyes things. Ellie Klein on the wing. Hetzler flashes high. This is Maya and Gregory in the corner. Off the bounce. Half a minute in. Here's our, nope, Kowicki had a chance and didn't pull the trigger. Front it goes. Ball's tipped and it will be tipped out of hands. So good interior defense or initial defense by Columbus Grove. Crestview probing, trying to find some holes in that zone defense. Grove sliding their feet very effectively. Nothing available here early on. Our first quarter today is sponsored by Lee Kinsel and Irv on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. That shot misses. That's the rebounds and. We're going to get contact. I think we have a jump nope, ball. Jump ball, held ball. Yes, yeah, so maybe the, there was a foul call. That was incorrect. Held ball situation. Crestview going to come out right away in the diamond press, try and speed tempo up, maybe get some transition buckets before that zone gets set up for Columbus Grove. This is Kendall Palti, who wears number 21. She's headed to the rim, tried to bounce it across the lane. It was stolen. Casey Gregory the other way. Grove does a nice job getting back. No light ball turnover bucket for Crestview. Casey Gregory on the wing. Ellie Klein. It's a very active 2-3 zone. Callie Gregory gets a three look that bounces hard. She and Ruth Meyer go after it, and Kendall Paldy comes away with it. Paldy to the rim. And the first basket goes to Columbus Grove. Nice job of attacking the basketball on that loose ball by Kendall Paldy, and she does. She goes down and scores it. Whenever you can get free ones in a game like this, it's absolutely critical. Skip pass. Casey Gregory loads up a three. And a rebound to Achmoudi. Couple good looks for Crestview. Got to continue to shoot it with confidence. Lauren Achmoudi with the basketball. Kind of surveys things. Paulie's going to set a screen high. To the corner it goes. Crestview also in a zone defense to begin with. This is Ruth Meyer. She throws it down inside to Nesby. Nesby's working against Etzler, and she traveled. Yeah, Nicole Nesby just very under control when she gets the ball in the post. That time, though, she took an extra step mark. Turnover, Crestview with the basketball going against a 2-2-1 press now from Columbus Grove. Scoreboard today brought to you by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and in our community. It's just 2-0 so far, Columbus Grove. We're two and a half minutes into this one. Going to run Gregory across the baseline, and then there's a nice screen by Joseph Kowicki for Etzler. Callie Gregory for three, bounces a little bit hard, and Nesby swoops after the rebound. This is Achmoudi. Abby Stecksholdy loads up a three. The bounces are off over the backboard. We've had a couple of three-point field goal attempts. Our three-point field goal sponsor today is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. 
You can visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Stetch already had a really good look right there. She leads this Columbus Grove Bulldog squad with 22 threes on the season. And we get a kicked ball. That will stay with Crestview. Maya Etzler will be the inbounder. Under out of bounds that versus the zone. See what Crestview comes up with. Etzler gets a screen. And Colwicki has it now. And Casey Gregory. Paulty was knocked the ball away to Ockmoody. Ahead to Paulty. Kendall to the rim. Nesby rebounds. Blocked by Etzler. Ockmoody up and it goes for her. Nice persistence on the offensive glass right there by Grove. Ockmoody gets the bucket, but they played volleyball on the backboard just a little bit. First four points of the game go to Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Pass inside. Etzler doubled up. Has to kick it out. Cross court. Callie Gregory goes to the rim. Nesby challenges her. Battle for the rebound. And I think that's a pretty good term, Dave. They battle for the rebound yeah, right they, there. Loose ball. Girls getting after it. The arrow's going to point Crestview's way. Half a quarter gone here. Callie Gregory had a look from behind the arc, but she hasn't connected there, so she tried to penetrate and find something. Maya Essler got an inbounds pass behind a screen, and she will go to the free throw line. Our free throws today are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and in St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. The foul called on Nicole Nesby. That's her first. And I do think that's a storyline between Etzler and Nesby. Who gets in foul trouble first? If it does occur, Nesby picks up the first one of the game for either team. 4-1 Columbus Grove, second free throw. That also is good for the 68% shooting free thrower. Here's the diamond press. Steck he looks, now Palti. Steck he throws it to the middle where it's tipped around and Ockmody couldn't handle it. Gregory to the rim, and Callie's got her first basket of the day. We're tied at four. There's your light ball turnover. Crestview able to convert on it. Ruth Myers trapped on the sideline, and we get a held ball there. This one favors Columbus Grove. Yeah, it'll be Grove's basketball. I do find it interesting. We saw this in the regional semifinal as well. Ockmody sort of drifts down to the other end of the floor against pressure. I, I like her being back there helping out a little bit, but Coach Schrader has a lot of confidence in his other guards to take care of the rock. Steck Schulte gets a pair of, or Ockwood, gets a pair of screens and buries a three-point field goal. Her 89th three-point field goal of the season. Sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, 7-4 Bulldogs. One of the prettiest looking step back threes you'll see in the game today, boys or girls. Tipped out of bounds, and Callie Gregory's the one who hit it. First sub into the basketball game will be number 10, Jade Seifker for Columbus Grove. Also in is number 14, Allison Thompson for Coach Schrader. And a foul on the sideline? Yes, going to have a foul. I think it might be on Ellie Klein. That is correct. Her first team's first of the quarter. Now, again, right there, Lauren Ockmoody at half court. You get the ball to her, you're in a situation where you can attack the basket, maybe have numbers, and that's what Grove looked to do right there. The foul negated the opportunity. Ockmoody in the corner. There's a pass inside. Palti skip pass. Thompson came in the game a moment ago, and Seifker. Here's Ockmoody for three. She got another one. She gets hot. She'll... She'll make some noise in this, this place, and right now she is already. The Grove crowd on their feet. 10-4, Columbus Grove. Two and a half to go, opening quarter. Another three-point field goal sponsored by Loud of Jewelry. Casey Gregory to the wing it goes to Colwicki. Bounce pass inside. That's their skip pass. To line for three. And Palti gets the rebound. Crestview with several looks from distance here in the first quarter. They have not connected on a three ball yet, Mark. Good rebounding right now by a team wearing white jerseys. Yes, though. one and done. Yeah. 
Seifker and Thompson pass inside. Kendall Palti ball fakes. Goes up with the left hand. And the rebound comes to Casey Gregory. Knight's in a hurry the other way. Casey Gregory looked inside and went back on top to Ellie Klein. Maya Etzler, skip pass. Crestview just a little more hesitant than we've seen them play as of late. Got to give Grove defense a lot of credit. Ellie Klein in the corner. Maya Etzler. Callie Gregory will get a three ball look. And she nails her three point field goal. She's got five in the game. That's her 56th three point field goal of the season. Yeah, first one of the game. Can't stop her, can only hope to contain her. Had to counter Lauren Ockmitty a little bit, and she does right there. Cuts the lead to three. 10 7 Grove as we hit the minute mark, opening quarter. Thompson and Ockmoody. Nesby inside, she goes to work, and she will draw a foul. The premier sponsor for Crestview is Lee Kinsel on Irvin Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Now that foul right there, Mark, I thought it was going to be on Maya Etzler. They actually called that on Ellie Klein for a reach-in on the back side, standing Nesby to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. That's two fouls on Ellie Klein. Ruth Meyer comes back into the basketball game for Kendall Palti with 48.1 to go. Nesby shoots about 60%, 61% from the free throw line. Second leading free throw shooter on this Grove squad. She makes the second of two. It's 11-7 Bulldogs. First quarter ticking down here. We're at 40 seconds. Kowicki in the corner. Looked inside Gregory. Here's Etzler. Little jumper in the lane, really nice move by Maya Esler. She's got four in the game. Uses that backboard, that backboard's your friend. That is something that Maya has improved upon throughout the year. Beginning of the year, she tried to lay that over the front of the rim. Use that backboard right there and scores Jade Seifter gets a three look out of the corner. Esler rebounds, pressure you a chance to get the last shot of the quarter. Callie Gregory on the wing, goes baseline, pull up jumper. Etzler battles for the rebound. Maya goes up at the buzzer, and I sure would have counted anyway. Opening eight minutes in the books. Columbus Grove 11, Crestview 9. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Elida Fieldhouse, the Union Bank Court. Our second quarter sponsor is Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Cary Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and in our communities. 11-9 Columbus Grove, Dave. 11-9 Grove, a great first quarter for both squads in the sense that they tried to establish what they want to do. It's just about putting the ball in the basket. Lauren Ockmitty with eight of those 11 for Grove. She's got two threes and looking really good. Callie Gregory hit one three. She's had several good looks. Crestview with the basketball here to begin the second quarter. Callie Gregory has five. My Etzler has four. That's the nine. We mentioned that... Uh, Lauren Ockmoody had eight of the 11 points. Here's a lob inside. Gregory on top to Casey Gregory. She goes to the rim, gets cut off by Nesby. Klein stays in the game with her four fouls. We're going to get a foul here that will go against is Allison Thompson. It is. Allison's Casey Gregory penetrated foul. the ball down to the block. Got in there with the trees a little bit. Fortunate enough to come out with a foul against Grove. Callie Gregory on the wing, deep 3-4 this time. That was a pure jump shot. Nothing but cotton on that one. And that gives Crestview their first lead of the game, 12-11 with 7.5. Let's see what Lauren Ockmoody does now. Three-point field goal sponsored by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Kelly Gregory's second made three-point field goal puts her team up by a point. And poked loose. Good diving play. That's a nice play by Casey Gregory. 
to Klein. Thompson gets it back and she will be fouled. Good hustle by Grove to get back in that play and transition. Nicely done. They create a situation where the pass wasn't quite on the numbers uh, for Crestview and they had to toss it up and Grove was right there to grab a hold of it and draw a foul. Maya Etzler gets her first foul in that uh, melee right there. Each team has a single foul here in quarter two. Yeah, you're not disappointed that Maya Etzler's only picking up her first foul of the game here in the second quarter. It's just that it's 80 feet away from the basket. There's a hustle play. Ah, Moody. Here's Nesby to, to the rim. Missed it. That's the, that's the rebounds. Does a nice job of walling up and staying straight up and not fouling Nesby on that move. Callie Gregory off a of screen. Kowicki and then down to Gregory again. I missed the fact that Kennedy Kreider came in. She wears number 15 for the blue and red. Coach Gregory yelling instructions from the far end. Etzler looks, cutting Kowicki. Oh, she missed a shot, but Etzler rebounds. There's Ruth Meyer battling, or no, Sockmoody battling inside. Along with Kennedy Kreider, help yep. all tie up. Going to go Grove's way. Kendall Paldy will re-enter the basketball game. The Good. premier sponsor for the Crestview Knights is Lee Kinsel on Irvin Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Yeah, good luck for Crestview right there, trying to dissect that zone. Josie Kowicki unable to come up with the bucket. Ock Moody. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Just the way she cross over, so special. Myers pinned on the baseline, looking for somebody, throws it out to Nesby. Palti to the corner, goes to Abby Steck shoulder. Her shot's long. And who hit it out of bounds? Maya Esther hit it out of bounds. Got to check out on the glass both ways. Nice hustle there by Grove to create a deflection. They maintain possession. 12-11 Crestview with 5.44 to go in the second. Took Crestview a while to get on the board in the opening quarter. And Groves having trouble getting on the board in quarter number two. Crestview straight man-to-man -man now. And what do we have? I think Josie Kowicki yes, is going to pick was. up the personal. Josie Kowicki. Straight man-to-man -man with yeah. Callie Gregory guarding Lauren Ockmoody. But now Crestview drops back in the 2-3 zone. With the sideline out of bounds. This is Lauren Ock Moody. I think the zone, the purpose of the zone, they do not want to allow penetration by Grove or the penetration kick, especially if Ock Moody's on the perimeter. This is Ock Moody with the basketball. Now Nesby, top of the free throw line area. And we're going to get a timeout. This one will go to Crestview and Brian Schrader. Timeout's brought to you by Dale's Concrete. Back in a moment, you're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. Our initial timeout of the basketball game was called by Columbus Grove. Our timeouts today are brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. I like that timeout by Coach Schrader right there. Things were getting a little ragged in the half-court set. Girls are looking for each other for Grove. Let's settle down. Let's talk about it. And let's get back to what we want to do on the rest of this possession. We've played almost three minutes of quarter number two. The only basket by either team is the three-point field goal by Callie Gregory to make Crestview up 12-11. Akmudi with the basketball. Ruth Meyer on the wing. And Gregory anticipated and knocked it out of bounds. That's a good defensive play, Dave. Yeah, we were talking during the timeout. Is Crestview in a box or not? They aren't in a box, but they definitely know what area code Lauren Ockmoody is at all times. They're passing her off from one player to another. So it's almost like a box, but by multiple players. Allison Thompson came back into the basketball game at the dead ball. It's her with the basketball and banged away by Klein. She rips it away. Callie Gregory heads the other way. Casey open in the corner. Ring it up. Three ball, corner pocket for Casey Gregory. Her first three of the game. Three-point field goal sponsored by Loudix Jewelry. Your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Both Crestview baskets in this quarter are three-point field goals. And that was an illegal screen set by Kendall Palti. 
I love the idea of screening the zone, the situation, though. you got to be set. And sometimes it's not so much the, the, the guy setting, the girl setting the screen. The, the ball handler's got to go right off her shoulder. And Brian Schrader says we need another timeout. Sponsored by Dale's Concrete. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball, WOSN. Back at Elida, our free throw sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delta, C. St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 4.33 to go. Second time out for Columbus Grove in less than a minute time. 15-11 yeah. Crestview. Crestview in the half court. We talked about how teams and coaches say, we want to run, we want to run. But more than often than not, it turns into a half court game when it gets to tournament time. Callie Gregory with another two. Pull up jump shot for Callie Gregory from 12 feet. Puts her team up six. Grove running her off the three point line. She's got to be able to hit that baseline jumper. She does right there. Leads, us, leads Crestview in field goal percentage at 54. Steck Schulte wanted to get a look at three, could not because Casey Gregory got to her. Very active hands right now. And who hit it? Ends up with blue yep. basketball, but Casey Gregory didn't think that was the case. She went after that and dove after it, wasn't able to get a hand on it. And Back. again, that defensive scheme, Mark, Crestview is just doing a great job. They're in a zone, but it is with man principles, especially on number two, Lauren Ockmoody. Elise Fortman, a 5-6 sophomore, enters the game for Columbus Grove. Under four minutes to go. It's 17-11, Knights. And Kowicki traveled under pressure. Good defensive pressure by Grove right there. A big turnover that they need right now. See if they can get off the double ones. They've been on 11 for a long time. Lauren Ockmoody, the girl, to make that happen. Nesby out to set a screen for Ockmoody, but they jumped that really quickly with Gregory. And that's a defensive change. That's one of those wrinkles that Crestview has implemented defensively. Nesby does a great job of setting ball screens up top. They're defending it with two guards, not with Maya Etzler. Thompson steps into the lane, and she makes a jump shot. Allison Thompson's first basket of the game makes it 17-13 and ends a very lengthy drought. Yeah, Thompson had a really good game in the regional semifinal as well. Splashes that one. Just what the doctor ordered if you're a Grove fan. Three minutes to go in our opening half. Klein into the lane to Gregory. To Etzler, but it's tipped away. Etzler again. And went out of bounds off of my Etzler's foot. Could you say maybe that Crestview overpassed the ball in that possession, Mark? I, I think that Etzler had a jumper, and I think her coach is going to say, you know what, we need to talk about our offensive scheme a little bit. 2.51 to go in the second quarter. You're watching high school tournament basketball on WOSN. You can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 per month. Download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wsn.tv. Yeah, we yeah. talked about the turnover there, Mark. Uh, Crestview overpassing the basketball. In their regional semifinal against Calvert, they dissected Calvert's 2-3 zone in that fashion. They got the ball into Maya Etzler, and she found open players. Well, the Grove defense, they are moving much, much better uh, here today. And sometimes you got to look to put the ball on the floor hard and attack the rim. Let's we'll see if Crestview makes the adjustment. See what uh, Coach Schrader came up with, too. This is Palti, uh, uh, Akwudi on top. Wanted to go to Palti, and that got covered up. Crestview defense very active. Crestview gives up just 30 points a game on the season. Thompson's going to get a three. Banked it in. And that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a wide open look at the top with Josie Kowicki face guarding out of the zone. One Lauren Ockmoody, Allison Thompson, a big shot off the window for three. Three point field goal sponsored by Loudix Jewelry. It's down to a one point game, 17 16 Crestview. All the points in this quarter for Columbus Grove have been scored by Allison Thompson. And then Kelly Gregory comes back and nails her third three-point field goal. She got 13 points in the game. Punch, counter punch. Both teams going at each other really, really hard. Just what you'd want to see in a regional championship game. Palti tried to get in the lane, could not. This three bounce goes long from Fortman. 
2016 Crestview. Gregory probing as she brings the ball down the floor. Head up, looking all the way. Akmudi with a steal. Lawrence headed to the rim. And up through traffic. Missed a shot. Klein saved it, but wrecked Akmudi, who goes back up again. And that time she'll score. Not where you want to throw the basketball. Lauren Akmudi will make you pay, and she does. That's 10 for her in the basketball game. Two in this quarter. It's 2018 Crestview. Approaching a minute to go before halftime. Ellie Klein, a real heady player, just made a, a cardinal uh, rule mistake right there. If you're going to save it, throw it towards your end. She ended up throwing it back towards Grove's basket to the wrong player in Lauren Ockmoody. Casey Gregory looking over at Coach Mark Gregory, looking for some uh, advice here. Let's see what he calls. He's going to play last shot, it looks like. I think Coach Schrader will be fine with that at this point in time in the contest, Mark. Of course, this helps Ellie Klein a little bit. She had a couple of fouls. Mm -hmm. She's not going to pick up number three unless there'll be something going to the goal by playing it this way. <laughs> Casey Gregory. The particular set that Coach Gregory's calling out against the zone, we might see Callie Gregory open on the corner and then maybe coming up a, off a double screen off a reversal. Let's see what happens. There she goes, ball side corner. Look for Crestview to reverse it. Yeah. Skip pass. Ellie Klein will get a three look. And she bears a three-point field goal. Ellie Klein, the silent assassin, drills it. Lauren Ockmoody with the look. Got a great look from midcourt after the first 16 minutes. Crestview will head to the break up 23-18. You're watching high school basketball WSN. for Crestview is Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Mark Schein, Dave Bowen. Dave, your, your analysis, your thoughts here on the first half. Well, we've got a five-point lead for Crestview, but and that's what's most important, but man, the stats are just like dead even across the board, Mark. Rebounding eight for Crestview, nine for Grove. Turnover, seven each from the floor. Crestview, eight for 17. Grove, eight for 18. The difference in the game, Crestview has two more threes and one more free throw. The Crestview's five for 10 from deep. Grove, three for eight. The Knights, two for two from the line. And Grove, one for two. So tight here at halftime. The coaches with the adjustments are really going to have to decide, do we stay with what's got us here, or do we do we mess with it a little bit, Mark? Well, each of these teams, of course, have a first-team all-district player in the Northwest Ohio, and they have lived up to expectations. Lauren Ockmoody has 10 in the opening half. Callie Gregory has 13. Your premier players are stepping up and doing what you expect them to do. The stars are shining, and if you're Coach Gregory, you want to continue to lock in on Lauren Ockmoody here in the second half. Offensively, do you look to flash Callie Gregory into the post a little bit more? They've been going through Maya Etzler in there, and that is definitely a lethal weapon for Crestview, but maybe they need to have Callie Gregory come in there, and then maybe she can feed high load to uh, Maya or kick it out for a three from that point. If you're Grove, you got to contest the three ball. Uh, Crestview's got five of them on ten opportunities. Offensively, I'd like to see Nicole Nesby get more involved for Grove, and... With all that being said, for both sides, Mark, it's easier said than done. Yeah, the girls got to come out here and continue to fight, and they will. Third quarter sponsor, Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. It'll be Crestview basketball first. Out of all of that analysis, Lauren Ockmoody had eight in the opening quarter, just two in the second quarter. I'm seeing what, what coach came up with to try to get her some open looks, too. Yeah, and with her only getting two, it was a 14-7 second quarter for Crestview. The Knights go right into Maya Etzler early in this possession. Callie Gregory jumps right over everybody and scores points 14-15 and 15 for her. Nice little dribble with her left hand. Stops and pops from the free throw line. 25-18 Crestview here early in the third quarter. Palti on the baseline and battle with the basketball. Ellie Klein with great is. hustle. She gets the turnover. Here's a long pass ahead to the rim goes Casey Gregory. 
and it rolls in for a pass from her sister. But Coach Schrader, he's going to take a timeout as Crestview comes out with an early 4-0 run to extend the lead to nine. You're watching high school tournament basketball, WOSN. We're back at United Fieldhouse. Our timeout sponsor today is Dale's Concrete. You can call Dale's Concrete at Decker and Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Good timeout, Dave. Outstanding timeout for him. Coach Schrader. Yeah, a four-point run by the Lady Knights. Yeah, you, you can say, well, we may need them at the end of the game. Well, the way things are happening right now with momentum, you're, go you're not going to need them at the end of the game if you don't use them now. Abby Stecksholdy wants to step in the seam of his own. Couldn't find an opening there. Ellie Klein completely shaded on Lorne Achmuty. Nicole Nesby with a nice look from the jump from the free throw line. That's the rebounds. Palti and Meyer chasing around Gregory. She finds Ellie Klein. Chance to go up double figures for Crestview. Yeah, Nesby had a real good look right there, Mark. Maybe she not did. where she typically shoots the basketball from, but Maya Etzler is going to shoot it from the same spot, and she's going to connect. Maya Etzler now has six points in the game, and there is a double-figure lead at six and a half minutes to go in the third. It's 29-18. Lauren Achmuty is going to have to look to become more aggressive offensively. She knows that as well. Casey Gregory up playing them tight now. And Ruth Myers. Nesby patrolling that foul line area. There she is. And a move to the goal with the left hand. Esther got a hand on it. Sure did. Good move by Nicole. Just better defense by Maya. Callie Gregory for three. Crespi looking to run away and hide here early in the third quarter. Coach Schrader going to take another timeout. A three-point field goal sponsor today is Loudix Jewelry, your family and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert. Or online at loudix.com. That becomes the fourth made three-point field goal for Callie Gregory and the sixth for their team. And here they are up 14 right now and on a roll. And she's doing what a senior should be doing in this situation. Uh, Callie Gregory, during her career, there have been times where if she didn't hit early on, she really struggled from deep, uh, from behind the arc throughout the contest. She didn't hit early on today, but as a senior, she has stepped up, and as you said, she's got four threes and uh, doing what a senior should do. Well, you know, Dave, I've had a chance to, to cover Crestview basketball over the years and years and years. Isn't it nice to see, and I'm, I'm, I'll suspect uh, Callie right now, but a lot of other kids too, how they grow as their career progresses. As a sophomore, just a nice player who played along, did good things, a little bit more as a junior, and now she's just taking over the basketball game right now. And it's, it's good to see kids grow in that role. Absolutely, and that's what it's all about, watching kids as freshmen continue to grow throughout their career in whatever it may be, either as an athlete or in the swing choir, in night vision for Crestview or the choir for Columbus Grove, whatever the case may be, that's what's fun as an educator to watch kids grow throughout their high school career. Crestview has taken uh, nine points on the board here in this quarter. Inside the Nesby and really good job by Esther to go straight up and block the shot and then rebound it. I love the idea by Coach Schrader. Got to go inside right there, but my Etzler played great D. Callie Gregor got challenged on her move to the goal. It will go out of bounds off of Crestview, so Columbus Grove survived that one. Callie Gregory has 18. Lauren Ockmoody with the basketball. It needs to be a situation where she gives it up and then moves. They try to find her. On another part of the floor, it's just that Crestview is so cognizant of where she's at at all times. Tried to post her up this time. Turn around, jumper is short. Rebound, Ellie Klein throwing ahead to Casey Gregory. Casey Gregory to the rim and scores. She's got seven in the game. Good look by Klein. Yeah, Ellie Klein again does a great job of just having an outstanding floor game. Finds Casey there on the fly. Moves the lead up to 16. Nesby battling inside with Etzler. The arrow will favor Columbus Grove. We played uh, 
three minutes and 16 seconds. Grove has not been able to get on the scoreboard here in quarter three. They've had a couple lengthy scoring droughts today. Yeah, and Lauren Ockmoody taking the ball out of out of bounds right here. She walked over. She just she should have shook her head a little bit, Mark. Like, oh gosh, it, you know, two thirds of this world's covered by water right now. Lauren thinks the other third's covered by blue shirts. Callie Gregory all over her right now. Desby throws it back out front. This is Abby Steckshoulder. She's trying to get the rim against Colwicky. And Callie Gregory spikes it into the crowd. I could say that because she plays volleyball too, doesn't she? She does. Yeah. Ended her volleyball career right here on this floor in the regional tournament against the Calvert Senecas. She'd like to come away with a W in basketball. Elise Fortman, Allison Thompson in the game. Allison Thompson had a really nice second quarter with five points. See if she can spark her team right here. Maya Etzler out of the game. Maybe Grove looks to get the ball down in the deep post and Nicole Nesby, she comes up to set the screen. There's Ockmoody cutting through. Spun it up a little bit hard. Nesby tipped it over to Thompson's hand and she was unable to finish. There's a long pass ahead from Gregory. You know what, her sister's gonna take her out to dinner tonight because <laughs> she keeps handing Casey the ball in great spots. Yep. Nine points for Casey Gregory. They got doubled up at 36-18, but not anymore. Three-point field goal, Ruth Meyer. That was huge. Yeah, absolutely. That's her 14th three on the season. Cuts the lead to 15. Halfway through the third quarter. A Loudix Jewelry three-point field goal. 36-21, Crestview. Ellie Klein being a little patient this possession. We always talk about the first four minutes of the third quarter, first four minutes of the game. If you're checking boxes, if you're Crestview, you, you're really pleased with how your team has come out here at the beginning of the third. Ellie Klein into the free throw line area, bounce pass low. That'll be a finish for Kennedy Kreider. Give the assist to Ellie Klein again. Just does such a great job of attacking the basket and then finding teammates. Tried to get a reverse layup up by Ruth Meyer. That won't go. Kelly Gregory heads the other way to Ellie Klein, and her coach is going to take a timeout. 3.04 to go in the third. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Elida Fieldhouse with a timeout called by Crestview. A timeout sponsor today is Dale's Concrete. You can call Dale's Concrete a decorative stamping and lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Curious why Coach uh, Gregory called that timeout. Things yeah. seem to be on a roll for him right now. I'm going to label that a PTO, a positive timeout. They ah. just scored. We see that. That's evolved in the game it over is. the last few years. Coaches, after we do something good, I want to bring the girls over and let them know they're doing something good. We're going to take a timeout and just continue to execute. And then conversely, if you're on the other side of that timeout, you're like, okay, what do we need to work on? Because you're just trying to get stops. Well, they, they did uh, get my Esther back in the game too. Mm -hmm. Here's Callie Gregory into the corner, jump out of the corner. How many assists is she giving her sister today? <laughs> I, Casey I like, Gregory yeah. for 12 now, go ahead. Casey Gregory, a bulldog. Callie does the work. Casey just puts it up in the basket. Ruth Meyer's going to get a jumper over Etzler nice. and scores. That was really nice. Yes, good, she's good got, up fake and attack. She's got five all in this quarter. It's 41-23, Crestview. Yeah, Ruth Meyer's a water bug. Maximum role player for this Columbus Grove squad. Ellie Klein. It's Maya Etzler to Gregory, Callie, and she's tied up by Ockmoody. It'll be Crestview basketball out of bounds with 2.11 to go in the third. We'll be giving a Stolly Hustle Award winner when this game comes to an end. Yeah, Crestview with an 18-point lead, just a total domination here in the third quarter. Did not see this on my bingo card. I see Gregory to Callie. Ellie Klein to the corner, and Maya Etzler, Klein for three. Rims hard. Akmudi tips it out, and Casey Gregory gets it. Now there's a scramble for it. Akmudi's going to pick it up. To the rim she goes. Lauren Akmudi's got 12 in the game. Good hustle play by her. 
Yeah, that's her first bucket of the second half, Mark. She hasn't been able to get a look. Gets one in transition there. 12 points in the game. The lead is 16 at 41-25 with 90 seconds to go in the third. Klein turns the corner and throws it to Akmudi, who makes a heads-up play to save it. Absolutely great hustle by Lauren Akmudi. Didn't give up on it when it went off her hands. Able to knock it off the Crestview player. Hey, minute 22 left in the third. Get a couple buckets. Get a bucket stop, bucket, and take momentum into the fourth. You get right back in this game if you're Columbus Grove. Akmudi's getting screens. Wants to step back and jump, but Kalwicki got it out to it in a hurry. Etzler knocks it away from Nesby. Not only has that defense been good on the perimeter, but they've done a really nice job with Nesby inside, too. Pauldy step-up jumper. Rebound, Callie Gregory. Casey Gregory looked at it in the corner, turned it down, tried to beat an Akmudi baseline and couldn't. Coach Gregory calling four out, one in, basically. Good defense by Akmudi, going to get and the five. Yep, good, really good defense. Couldn't get into their set because Akmudi pressured so well. Five count will go the other way. She played tremendous defense yes, on did. that play. Last couple times down the floor, she's been very, very effective on defense. Lauren Akmudi had 29 in the regional semi, 12 rebounds, three seals, and two assists. Here's Kendall Palti. Thompson in the lane. Palti ball fakes. Bounce nice. pass Nesby. That was really done by Kendall Palti. Yeah, give Nesby the bucket. Palti the assist. Good job penetrating the interior defense of Crestview. Something Grove has struggled to do throughout the game. Well, the last six points of the game have gone the way of the Bulldogs. Uh -huh. 21.2 to go in the third, trying to make a run. And and bounce it goes to Casey Gregory, now to Ellie Klein. A little full court pressure and then peel off. Casey Gregory, Thompson guarding her. Callie Gregory. I don't think she's going to give this up. Short jumper, bounces around. Etzler rebounds. Crestview will take a 14 point lead to the fourth and a chance to go to the state tournament. 41 27 nights. You're watching high school tournament basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Elida Fieldhouse. Our fourth quarter sponsor is Lee Kinsel Sales and Service on Irwin Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre owned specials at leekinsel.com. Our scoreboard sponsor is Carry Insurance. Carry Insurance is in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and in our school communities. 18-9 quarter, Dave, 41-27 as we head to the fourth. Knights up. Yeah, Crestview has won the second and third quarter to create this lead, this little bit of a cushion, if you will, going into the fourth. But again, Lorne Moody and this Columbus Grove Bulldog, there's not the Bulldog team, there's not going to be any quit in them. They've been running this high screen, which has been very effective for Akmudi all year long, but Crestview has made an adjustment coming into this game, and Lauren just has not been able to get that look at the top of the key. The last six points of the game have gone the way of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. A little mini run. Thompson tries to get to the rim. Steck shoulder for three, and she goes after the rebound. Battle with Thompson and Klein, and I think it went off the leg of Maya. That's a good hustle play in the corner by Allison Thompson. Yes, great effort by Allison Thompson. Almost, it was going to be a held ball situation. She banged that off of Etzler's leg, and they maintained possession. Ockmoody looks, and that ball's tipped by Gregory, Callie, but Ruth Myers gets it. Well, somebody's always around the ball. Exactly. Ruth Myers it, it always around like the ball. It seems like there have been loose balls and things that Grove has come up with them more often than not. Thompson's jump shot a bit hard. Etzler with another rebound. Allie Gregory. Columbus Grove's gone man to man. Yeah, Ruth Myers on Gregory. No surprise there. And then she's going total face guard on her after she gives the ball up. Klein in the free throw line area. To Etzler. Back to Ellie Klein. 
Left-handed shot, Ellie Klein has five points in the game now. One of the most ambidextrous players I've ever witnessed on the girls' uh, side of things. She does a nice job, can go right-handed, left-handed. Great free throw shooter, just doesn't go to the line that often because she does so, uh, uh, handles the ball so effectively. 16-point Crestview lead, 43-27. Pull-up jumper long. Thompson scurries after the rebound. Allison in the lane to Nesby. And there's Etzler again. Ruth Myers inside off glass by Etzler with the rebound. Thompson hit that ball and it went off of Etzler's leg. Allison Thompson getting after it to 5-7 yeah. South Lamore. Nice job if the player puts the ball down low off a rebound. Got a chin it right there, and she does take advantage of the opportunity to knock it out of bounds. Lauren Achmoody will throw it out to Abby Steckscholdy to Kendall Palthy, who just entered the game. Columbus Grove has just one senior in their starting lineup, that being Abby Steckscholdy. Here is Abby, a little runner in the lane. You called her name, she yes. scores it. Her first basket of the game makes it 43-29, Crestview. Ellie Klein and Grove. Casey Gregory. Yeah, Grove can string together some stops here. This is the time to do it. Crestview not really active on offense here, putting the ball above their head. You can feel maybe a little bit of momentum switch, but Callie Gregory may say, nope, she's going to miss it. Kendall Pauly tried to get the rebound, but Kowicki got it and scored. Josie Kowicki's first basket of the game. Yeah, Josie Kowicki, she's the maximum role player for this Crest Crestview Lady Knight squad. Just does what's asked of her. She's been up top there a lot with Lauren Ockmitty, and there's another turnover. Casey Gregory with that steal, 45-29 with five minutes to go in a basketball game. And her coach takes a timeout. 4.57 to go in the basketball game. Crestview 45, Columbus Grove 29. It's Dale's Concrete. Timeout. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Crestview Knights is Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com was a Dale's concrete and stamping timeout. Crestview up 16. Is this a timeout to become patient? I don't think so. I think it's to look for a 90% shot, but I don't think Coach Gregory is going to put the ball in the deep freeze at all. I think it's just a situation we want to get a high quality look, a little bit more movement on offense, which we are seeing right away here. Etzler, there back it is. door cut, Colwicky. She now has back-to-back -back baskets to Josie Kalwicki. 47-29. Stack 2-3 at the top, trying to read the screen and work off of that. Again, Lawrence has been held to two points here in the second half. That's a storyline of this one. Three-point field goal, Abby Steckscholdy. Casey Gregory will push the basketball the other way. And then hold it up a bit to run some clock. Get that high percentage shot that Dave talked about a moment ago. You talk about this being a Northwest Conference battle, and NWC team going to go to state. Callie Gregory, Liv Linderman from Jefferson, two seniors, outstanding careers. Well, they're passing the torch now to Lauren Ockmoody, Rylan Jones from mm. Allen East as well. Some great players coming back next year. Uh, Ockmoody just has been, as we said, handled a little bit here better in the second half, only having two points thus far. Kendall Pauly will pick up her second foul. It is not a shooting foul, but our free throws today are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphos, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Yeah, no matter who wins, it's a winning day for the Northwest Conference. Absolutely. Been a great year on the girls' basketball side in the conference. The boys as well. Congratulations to Spencerville with that league championship. And they got a big one coming up. It's a foul out front. Ruth Myers will pick up that foul. That is Ruth's first of the game. Her team's second of the quarter. Not been bringing for any fouls in the game. In fact, we've had no free throw shot here in the second half. And we only had four shot in the first half. Say, yeah. Not many. Gregory to Etzler. 
pass inside. Boy, this team passes the basketball well. And Callie Gregory now has 20 in the game, coming off a 30-point semifinal scoring performance. Stolen, Ellie Klein. Three minutes to go, it's 49-29, Knights. And Ellie Klein will find Casey Gregory. Got some substitutes waiting on the bench for Coach Schrader. Colwicki. Casey Gregory probe a little bit and back it out. Ellie Klein will go to the rim and get cut off by Nesby. Yeah, nice rotation by Nicole Nesby right there. Six-foot sophomore Nicole Nesby. Knights fans appreciate what they're seeing. Student body ought to be happy down there, Dave, because they're going to get a day off on Thursday. Yes. If the Knights hang on. We talked to Superintendent Kathy yeah, Molikoff before the game. She said if we're fortunate enough to come away with a W, it'll be a day off for Crestview on Thursday because these Lady Knights will be playing at 1 o'clock at the Here's University Jade of Jade Seifker, Elise Foreman in the basketball game. Uh, I'm looking to see who else checked in at that dead ball. Number 22, Abby Stuckshoulder is still out there. So is Ock Moody, and number 24 checked in. That's Bella Wilson. Missed Bella when she came in a moment ago. And Coach Gregory, yep. he just put five girls to the table for the Lady Knights. Maya Etzler and Casey Gregory. We're going to try to, obviously. He's going to call that timeout. He out is. To sub. Get a timeout to get the sub in. This will be a quick timeout, Dave. A, Dale's concrete timeout, so we're going to kind of keep it right here. Our scoreboard day has been brought to you by Cary Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and in our communities. And with 1.57 to go, it's a 20-point lead. 30 minutes of effort by those girls, and Coach is going to give them a break. Absolutely. And, again, congratulations to Columbus Grove. Just an outstanding season. They're going to finish up 21-6, and six, uh, tied for second in the Northwest Conference this year. And as you said, very few seniors on this roster. Columbus Grove, I, they and Allen East, I think they're going to be the two teams next year on the girls' side in the preseason you're going to look at as favorites in the Northwest Conference. Dave and I will come back when this one wraps up. We'll talk about our Stolly Hustle Award winner. We'll try to get an interview with the winning coach, see if we can get the Coach Gregory over here for a moment and get his thoughts on today's game. Let's try to get all the names that have got in here now. Haley McCoy is when she wears number 10. Kennedy Kreider wears 15. 20 is Lily Best. Uh, this is Peyton Hoffman with the basketball at the top. And who did I miss? 20 is Elisa El Eliza Reinhardt. So all new players in for them. Lockwood is still in the basketball game along with Steck Schulte. At 90 seconds to go. And there's going to be a foul out front that will be called against Jade Seifker. And Coach Schrader's going to bring in four more players yes, now. He is. That will be number 14, Thompson's back in. Number 15 is Maya Vierhoff. Number three is Jade Roder. And Sage Brenroth wears number 12. So... Lots of bodies in the game. This is Reinhardt. And on top it goes to Hoffman. A lot of these girls, JV players, played for Megan Lotzenheiser. They had a really good season for Crestview. Swing the ball around with 60 seconds to go. The ball went through the hands of Haley McCoy, a 5'10 sophomore. The same thing for Columbus Grove. A lot of the JV girls out there that played under the leadership of JV coach Matt Meyerholtz. Short jumper inside will go for Kennedy Kreider. Kennedy's got four points in the game now. And that pass goes a little bit long. 51.9 to go in this one. 51-29 in favor of Crestview. I did not see a 22-point lead with a minute to go in this one. We'll no talk about pregame. It's a really good game in January. Closer than the final score. 
Again, you, you got to give credit to the defensive scheme of Coach Gregory and Coach Jeremy Best. Really, really kept Lauren Akmudi at bay. Lily Best will nail a jump shot. She's got in the, in the books now. 53-29, half a minute to go. To the wing it goes. Fortman to Thompson. And again to number 12, Sage Benroth. Stolen. We'll go the other way with Peyton Hoffman. Looking for a teammate there. She found Reinhardt. And we're going to let this one come to an end. The Crestview Knights will go to the state tournament with a 53-29 victory over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Dave Bowen and I will be back in a moment with a post-game show. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. We're back at the Elida Fieldhouse where the Crest Knights have taken a 53-29 victory over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Our first order of business is to present our Stally Hustle Award winner. You can check out highlights of tonight's Stally Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. Our choice today, we chose Maya Etzler today for her efforts. Maya Etzler was just involved at both ends of the floor throughout the contest. Uh, she had eight rebounds, uh, three assists, and four big block shots really negated the second leading score for Columbus Grove, Nicole Nesby. She really had to fight for everything she got. Maya Etzler, again, the ball went through her on offense. Sometimes she attacked the basket. Sometimes she kicked it out to a teammate for a three. And as a result, she is our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Columbus Grove's going to finish the season 21-6. and six. They were had quarter scores of 11, 7, 9, and just two in the fourth quarter. Led today by Lauren Ockmoody. They're going to have fine finish with a fine 21-6 and six record. And as you said during a telecast, their future is very bright. Future is very, very bright. Lauren Ockmoody, she'll, she'll make adjustments yeah. off of this game. She'll learn from it, as will her coach, Coach Schrader. Again, she struggled the second half, only had two points. And you got to give credit to the Crestview defensive scheme. But as a result, though, uh, with Lauren Ockmoody, uh, she's the kind of girl that this will drive her and it'll drive this Columbus Grove squad bigger and brighter things in, in front of them. Crestview will go to 26 and 2, quarter scores of 9, 14, 18, and 12. They were led in scoring by Callie Gregory with a 20. They also got 12 from Casey Gregory, and just a fine all-around game for both of those two. Outstanding sister to sister, the coaches' daughters, and they just continue to do what you want to have players of that caliber do. Uh, Casey's not a freshman. No. Callie's not a senior anymore. Uh, they're above and beyond that. So congratulations to them. And they're going to the University yeah, of Dayton. And that's correct. The Knights will play next Thursday at 1 o'clock. They will play the winner of Rushi and Marion Local, who are playing as we speak. Congratulations to the Crestview Knights. And, uh, Rushi and Marion Local or Fort Laramie mm -hmm. and Marion Local? That is correct. Yeah. It is Fort Laramie. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was thinking the episode almost got pulled exactly. in. Thank you very yes. much for yes. correcting that, Dave. Yeah. yeah, Fort Laramie and Marion Local, who are playing as we speak. Crestview, 53, Columbus Grove, 29. We'll try to get an interview with Coach Gregory after this. You're watching High School Tournament Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Little Mecca, the Elida Fieldhouse, where the Crestview Lady Knights have come away with a regional championship victory over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I'm Dave Bowen. I've got Crestview varsity coach Mark Gregory with me tonight. Coach, just a great win for your squad. Talk about the defensive scheme that you put out there today against Columbus Grove. Well, you know, Lauren, Lauren Akhmudi is such a great player, and their team, their role players do such a great job, and they know where, they know where their bread is buttered. And uh, I, I just thought, we, we can't let Lauren be comfortable out there. And, and so we did a great job. A couple, couple shots early she got uh, where she had a good look. But after that, we did a great job. Josie Kwicki, uh, Ellie Klein, Casey Gregory, Callie Gregory helping out a little bit on the, on the bottom wing. But we did such a great job of making her think twice about shooting it. And that's what we told the girls we had to do. And she is the straw that stirs the drink. And, and she does such a great job of, of, of getting to the basket, getting shots, getting her teammates open looks. And, and I don't think she, she was comfortable doing that today. Yeah, you really made Lauren work for everything that she got. She only had two points in the second half after having 10 in the first. Yeah. And you were in a 2-3 zone. It wasn't a box, but boy, your girls really passed off 
uh, as far as defensively against Lorne. Yeah, for two, two days of preparation, I thought our girls did a, a, just an absolutely great job. And, and Coach Schrader does such a nice job of mixing up his, his uh, ball screens, double ball screen, triple ball screens. And uh, again, our girls communicated so well on that. And that was a, I told the girls that was the key. We needed, to be, we needed people up in the top rows to be able to hear us, and I thought we did that today. Outstanding. And let's switch the table here a little bit, move the table to the side of your offense and, and your team as far as it relates to your daughter, your daughters, Callie and Casey. Obviously an outstanding game for both of them. How does it feel again? as a dad to coach your daughters. And I know this is these are daughters three and four, but man, a regional championship here, it's gotta be special. And yeah, don't make me cry, but, <laughs> but yeah, I'm so proud of them. Uh, and again, it, it just didn't get much more special than being able to coach both your kids and then have your other kids there and your wife. I, it's just so special. But I also, with that being said, I can't say enough about our other girls. I mean, Ellie Klein hit one of the biggest shots of the season right there at the end of the half that put us up five rather than two. And I thought that was huge. And then we come out in the third quarter and just, just lay it down. And it wasn't Callie Gregory. It was other girls Correct. that made big shots for us. Again, can't say enough about them. Can't say enough about Maya Etzler and her coming back to play with us this year. There's so many storylines there. But, gosh, I just love this group. Yeah, 14-7, to 7, third quarter, sort of. A big punch right there, and then an 18 to 9 fourth quarter, the knockout punch for you to move on to the regional championship. You mentioned Maya right there. Mm -hmm. Maya was our Stolly Hustle Insurance Award winner today. I really thought she did a great job at both ends of the floor. Offensively, you got her the ball in the mid post area, and she found other players or attacked the basket. And then she was just outstanding against the second leading score for Columbus Grove yep. and Nicole Nesby. Yeah. Again, that was a key for us. Obviously, we knew we knew Ock Moody is going to get hers usually, but we can't let Nesby get off. And, and uh, Maya did a great job with her, but she also on the offensive end did such a good job of being active in the high post and then finding girls open after she caught the ball and was being and was strong with the ball. My concern was Maya not you know getting the ball knocked out of her hands, and and she didn't do that tonight. And and so for, she found teammates, and then she crashed the ball and got some huge, huge, huge rebounds for us. That started our fast break for us. Yes. Again, congratulations. We leaving anything out, Coach? I don't think so. I, I, I'm just so excited for our girls to get this opportunity because I think last two years we've been knocking on the door and we end up losing to the uh, in, in eventual uh, runner-up, state runner-up. And so it's nice to, to get back to, uh, back to state and uh, – It'll be awesome. I don't know who won that other game, but uh, it'll be interesting to see who we got, and it's time to go to work. Time to go to work yep. and prepare. The Crestview Lady Knights Regional Champions for our cameraman, Jacob O'Neill, who will take this back along with Nick Fraley and edit it. I want to thank them. The athletic director here at Elida, Dave Evans. And again, 13 of 14 games that Dave Evans and his crew have completed. They've got one more to go as he walks behind camera yep. right now. Yep. And these Crestview Lady Knights, they're in the Final Four, heading to the University of Dayton. And until we see them Thursday at 1 o'clock, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net. For Mark Shine and Dave Bowen, so long, everybody.